Good evening. In this video, I'm going to get into the hemp herd more uh, in detail. Now, my previous video uh, about hemp fiber, you know, I've referred to this picture quite a few times already. You've seen it several times. And uh, this really shows a uh, dissection, a split of an actual hemp stalk where the, the fiber is stripped off and the herd, the woody core, is what remains here in center. And this is arguably the most important part of the hemp plant, the most important product of the hemp plant, because this is the direct feedstock into a whole host of different carbon negative technologies. And this is how we really get to the point at which hemp can cause a tipping point in our economies, in our carbon economy, and how we can really get towards a carbon negative future with this plant that grows at an astonishing rate. Now, uh, this picture shows what the herd looks more like, you know, after it's been cut up and processed. Um, the, the hemp herd is extremely high in cellulose. In fact, one of the things that makes hemp so remarkable as a plant is its ability to fix carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into solid forms of cellulose. And there are a lot of very interesting properties to the hemp herd, the, the, the woody pith, if you will, of the plant that make it very unique compared to other plants. It's very uh, relatively lightweight material, has a lot of uh, air gaps and, and crenellations within it, so it's got a lot of uh, a lot of space to absorb different uh, liquids, odors. In fact, hemp herds can be used as an industrial absorbent uh, for, for cleaning up different chemical spills. And, uh, you know, one, one of the leading product uses for hemp herds, particularly in a place like Australia, which is very far ahead of us when it comes to the legalization and the utilization of hemp is actually animal bedding. Now, uh, you know, granted these are these are products, so you gotta take them with a little grain of salt. And there's still a lot of scientific investigation that needs to be done to really uh, to to really quantify some of the claims and some of the customer testimonials that these. Uh, hemp vendors from Australia really push out there, but you know, uh, anecdotal evidence is a good starting place for any scientific inquiry, and the antibacterial qualities of the hemp herd is something that uh, many different scientific reviews and, and literature reviews have already started to observe, make note of, and while it's not completely understood it is something that happens and uh, you know if you if you crop hemp with the ideal in mind that your main product is going to come from the fiber which the outer bast fiber of the hemp is approximately 25 percent of the total biomass and the herd is 75 percent then you know making your money or whatever money you get on the herd is, is kind of extra although you know, some of the companies from Australia that I've talked about have really pushed an opposite. They see the fiber as the cream of the crop, the place where you, you make your extra value, and the herd is really the workhorse, and selling it as animal bedding, one of their, their primary outlets, is how they recoup all of their initial investment in seed costs, in fertilizer costs, in water and labor, and harvest costs, etc., so, uh, you know, this is a very interesting application. We have a very well-developed animal science and equestrian science program at Cal Poly Pomona, and, and I believe that once we're growing hemp, this is something that we can really investigate in depth uh, because they're, you know, you really look into it. There are a number of problems with some of the different bedding products that are already out there, mainly wood shavings. And the, the fact is that hemp can be a much more environmentally sustainable and regenerative alternative to tree shavings and, and sawdust in addition to being a higher quality product for this purpose. 
Now, paper, one of the oldest uses of, of hemp. Uh, in the olden days, most of the paper made from hemp was made from the actual fiber. Nowadays, we have ways to make actual hemp paper from the herds as well. It's just crushed, compacted, pressed out, and you know, here's some some hemp materials that are sold by Rock Yannick. Very interesting online vendor of, of hemp, uh, all kinds of hemp materials, uh, hemp products. And then there's this compelling quote that every hempster ever has put out there from George Washington, who famously grew hemp at his farm in Mount Vernon. And then down here, another historical artifact are the Gutenberg Bibles, one of the first items in the Western world to be produced with a printing press. And it's also, the Gutenberg Bibles were also printed on hemp paper. Very fascinating artifact of Western civilization. Now, this is really the killer app of the hemp herd, what I think has enormous potential to really help us offset our greenhouse gas emissions and bring the legacy load of, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere you know, back into check of 350 parts per million or less. And this is called hempcrete. Now I'm gonna have to do a separate whole video on hempcrete because I believe that this is a game-changing carbon negative technology. But in a nutshell, you take your crushed up hemp herds, you mix them with hydrated lime, and you, you put it into the gaps of your conventional two by four wood framed construction and it replaces all the different layers of drywall, insulation, uh, two by four plywood or you know, you know plywood layers, etc. and just makes for a monolithic building material. It's uh, thermally massive, it's humidity regulating, temperature regulating, and moreover, all of the carbon dioxide that the hemp has taken out of the atmosphere and, and put into its woody core has now been removed from the atmosphere from the carbon cycle uh, for as long as the building stands. There's more information to it than that. There's a very interesting secondary reaction that happens with the hydrated lime, the calcium carbonate, and the hemp over time. But again, that's for a separate video. This is a very fascinating technology and particularly for a place like Southern California where we never stop building and we're constantly building new structures, tearing down old structures, putting up new structures. Uh, this is something that's very applicable for our eco region. This is a compressed um, uh, biocomposite made from hemp. There's actually a lot of long strand fibers in here as well, but this is an example of something where you can take the whole stock of the plant, long, uh, short, vast fibers, and the hemp herds together and make a very useful product. Obviously, this is a car door. This is uh, one of the main areas where hemp uh, biocomposite, compression molded biocomposites have taken off because they're uh, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent lighter than the uh, conventional uh, the conventional door composites that were used before this, you know, some type of fiberglass material. So this is one way that uh, automotive uh, manufacturers have found that they can reduce the weight of their vehicles and um, improve performance, you know, by, by doing that. So, you know, obviously this is compression molded. So when they're in the factory, they can set this to make all kinds of things. Any any kind of object can be made this way. And if we just increase the accessibility of the feedstock of the industrial hemp, you know, plant, then we'll see many, many more of these composites. And again, this is another type of carbon out of the atmosphere into a product. This is a carbon negative product and technology. And you know, the the last thing in my kind of gamut of what we can do with the the hemp herd. Um, I mean, this this picture is kind of a mystery, I'm sure, until I tell you. But this is basically carbon nanosheets, graphene. Uh, researchers from different universities in, in uh, northern New York, I believe uh, David Mitlin was the, the name of the researcher, have found ways to derive uh, carbon nanosheets comparable to graphene, which are going to be the next level of high-tech supercapacitors and high-tech nanoprocessors from the hemp herd. And this is very cutting edge technology. It's extremely fascinating. It's honestly a little bit beyond what I fully understand as just a plant guy because this really gets into some 
you know, computer science and, and, and high technology stuff. But from what I understand, the first application for these carbon nanosheets that they're looking at is to replace the anodes in lithium ion batteries so that the lithium ion batteries hold their charge for longer and they charge much faster. Uh, obviously that all has the potential to be game breaking. I've heard that there's also a lot of potential for making the uh, next generation of computer processors with graphene and carbon nanosheet technology also going to be huge but hemp is a, another highly sustainable source of these raw materials and, and if these materials can be derived from hemp can you just imagine the sort of future we'll have with these lithium, you know, next generation lithium ion batteries can recharge like that. It's partly made from a plant material that grows in the ground. So, um, you know, this is just a basic introduction. There's a lot of information out there about hemp birds. I encourage you all to do your own research and really look into it. And this is honestly the biggest part of why I'm so interested and so fascinated with growing hemp. The, the carbon negative technologies that can be derived from this plant just limitless. There's uh, unlimited potential for creating a whole economy just around the hemp herd. And the hemp herd is a byproduct of fiber production and it's arguably also a byproduct of grain production, but I'll get into that in a separate video. Uh, I believe that's all the information I want to put out just for, for this video, for this basic introduction, but there's going to be more to come. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable. West Coast.